here we are again. <laughs> um, this is a bit uh, slightly a, a compilation of um, different videos clips together. Yeah, it's about um, how did I make the rucksack? I had a bit, uh, yeah, a response from uh, a few uh, visitors on the web page. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, I realized uh, recently with the last two videos, I was talking about packing the rucksack. Yeah. How to get this uh, thing um, filled up like stable and for comfortable carrying it on the back yeah but uh, there are actually a few secrets behind that um, and a few tips and tricks i didn't mention in the last two videos and uh, to put it all a bit together like compact as a compact diy recommendation yeah in case you are interested in uh, making your own rucksacks yeah soft ones from wool and are not too clumsy uh, stitching things up yeah got a bit handy or gifted with your hands um, I wanted to show you a few tricks which I put into my DIY rucksack uh, it's the sun gives a bit in the shade here yeah compared to the standard one yeah which um, I would say well it's a high quality rucksack yeah but um, it doesn't 100% cover all the needs for traveling yeah and that's something um, it's all right for a short trip and just you know like average but um, there are a few nifty little um, tricks I put into this one. And I wanted to go into that specifically and how to, um, in case someone wants to create his own rucksack. So I just point out a few small um, differences to compensate on the missing parts on the standard one yeah to make this rucksack more comfortable for on a hike on a long-term hike and uh, which is then beneficial obviously yeah without losing any stuff for once and uh, to keep the whole rucksack more stable than average and uh, this is a bit um, I would say just as an introduction a bit of a master class yeah uh, I mean I've been uh, stitching uh, Land Rover hoods for many years yeah and I'm very capable on doing things on a sewing machine you know my use I've done made shoes yeah so I know how to handle leather and heavy leather glue things together properly and this sort of stuff so it all adds up for getting things done properly yeah as a background um, information so um, yeah you're waiting for what this guy wants to show about actually what I do in this video I going to uh, I went through lots of the older videos yeah and um, picked some of the clips out some sections and I will actually cut them into this video so as a compact uh, DIY project uh, web, um, recommendation it may be getting a bit longer this video this time but uh, I try to compensate things or compress together um, without redoing everything yeah because I can't be bothered stitching another rucksack actually it's quite some work involved and uh, money for the material as well yeah so first of all uh, before you even think of starting yeah you obviously have to get material together tools together and a sort of a concept yeah um, tool wise you need a measurement 
and uh, obviously scissors the speedy stitcher coming very handy i cut in a few clips of that maybe now maybe later or in between yeah where i do a bit on the speedy stitcher and uh, yeah scissors obviously yeah a few um, items that's absolute essential to do so and yes a sewing machine just a standard home sewing machine does the job nicely especially when it comes to the leather you definitely need something more um, yeah that provides a bit more power to your stitching and uh, recommendation this definitely helps to put um, the leather straps onto it's a lot of thick material you will bleed your hands or your fingers when you're going to try to do this by hand so a bit of special hand sewing machine there's one more thing i wanted to show you as a sample why this uh, speedy stitcher comes in really handy and uh, this is really heavy leather and uh, thick felt in it yeah and multiple layers and leather and the whole lot so i really managed to to get in really nicely yeah and that's where the long needle is coming in handy and uh, to get through all the material and uh, yeah that helps me actually to make my rucksack yeah i mean you imagine it's uh, quite a lot of junk to get through there and uh, you could i couldn't have done that with that one yeah the hand poker and uh, then um, taking a needle and poking it through and stuff yeah so uh, this is why i thought give you this is a recommendation really i can really it's proved it actually convinced me <clears throat> to use uh, this more often yeah. um, before you start cutting anything before i go into some of the details i mean um, you need a concept obviously what you want to achieve and um, to put it all together so a lot of background information needs to be uh, taken into consideration i'll show you a little bit i found actually my original uh, drawing it's difficult to i may put you in more detail uh, sketch here yeah, this is just a sort of a technical drawing it's um, basically the first part um, putting something so actually I can take the measurements and uh, rework things overnight you know while sleeping <laughs> um, or in advance when you're waiting for the material yeah so you actually got a pretty good idea on what you actually want to achieve yeah and always got a sort of a, a note a memory on where to put what and in which order you start cutting things stitching things together and um, yeah uh, luckily for you i found that in the drawer in between some staple of other paper yeah and um, so I, I i show you a detail of that clip that in yeah all right okay just uh, a quick um, detail i mean i did uh, draw the outline yeah just put it on a on a piece of paper and it's uh, i i did draw that in millimeter yeah it was a straight edge and the numbers on this chart is actually centimeter yeah the metric centimeter and um, uh, don't take that one to one because i doing the process i actually altered that a little bit especially the uh, the back pocket for the seat felt yeah it's written uh, 34 35 centimeter it's probably what it is because i had to uh, with all the numbers and, and, and measurements you always have to take into account that you have to turn over material yeah like uh, to stabilize the edge yeah so 
it makes sense when I got here 34 it's a finished measurement yeah the total finished width but for cutting it I did cut it in uh, 35 centimeters so I got half an inch uh, half half a centimeter for turn over the outer edge yeah for instance and the same for having it longer I did uh, draw in uh, 44 yeah the finished size and uh, because the seat pad is 40 centimeter long so I got four more centimeter for the turnover on the top and the bottom yeah plus the additional depth of or thickness of the material yeah because you have to think around the corner yeah it's not just right, 40 centimeters just to the top but there's another half an inch going downwards yeah so when I would make that 40 centimeter that would be too tight to get the uh, feet seat felt in because it's another three centimeter depth yeah half an inch or yeah it's about an inch more you need for then because it's a uh, depth of the material yeah so it's uh, 26 centimeter uh, uh, 26 millimeter have to add to the 40 yeah so and uh, with the turnover yeah that's then 50 and um, the other thing you see this is something you have to always have to take to into account and for the top like where I got this darted uh, thing yeah the uh, turnover of the eyelid row is actually three times yeah so it's basically a double double turn so basically the eyelid sandwiches three layers of material together yeah and uh, to give the whole stability so you have to add this onto it onto the uh, final cut yeah and um, that's why it's important to have a sheet like that and um, to work it out beforehand before you even start cutting the expensive material in pieces yeah and then find out oh bloody hell this half an inch missing yeah uh, you can always trim things off but you can't add it on yeah and uh, yeah it's just something uh, I wanted to point out why well, it's important to have a sheet like that so, um, that's why I say it's important to make this sort of uh, uh, concept yeah work out and what I always did um, we all no 3d yeah or cut like the cut drawings yeah like a 3d three-dimensional um, shape yeah I visualize my projects like in a dry uh, 3d dimension yeah so I actually I'm capable and maybe that's a gift I have but uh, I'm capable of transferring a drawing like that into a 3D, three-dimensional shape and can actually spin that around like a globe, yeah? And, and visualize that from all sides and uh, still having this drawing concept on mind and know where things to place and how they look like and uh, well, maybe it's a gift. I don't know if, if you ever thought about this sort of uh, um, thing while making your projects. But, um, and then, yeah, don't rush. Take your time, even if it takes a few days, especially when you have to wait for material. When you have the main concept, you can order the material, yeah, when you know what you need, yeah, to save on money. But then before you start cutting things, just because you are excited yeah no don't do that maybe just look, 
put the bits out you got yeah which which you need and then sleep a night over it and you're probably having a sleepless night because you start visualizing things how the pack coming together and it's like yeah an explosion drawing or drawing like like the old technical drawings out of the old manuals yeah the the the, the Land Rover drivers among you they know the old drawings from the uh, spare parts manual yeah where every part is drawn on the sheet yeah in perspective yeah and uh, so we can actually spin things around yeah from all sides and then um, well this is something you may consider before you start up a project like that yeah um, I know it's a lot to take in and um, it's not everyone everyone's a piece of cake I know um, but uh, when you feel comfortable doing this sort of stuff and dashing out the money for the material yeah go for it but uh, if not well you may find someone who can do that I'm not doing any contract works at all um, I've done my share and um, haven't got that much tools anyway and um, so I only do my own projects and uh, that's it um, what else we got um, I do put this inside out because most of the time the stitching going from the underneath side yeah and um, I have to get into that because I think that's something uh, important to uh, yeah I zoom that in in a bit hold on a sec um, get this right so, to get that right so what it basically is um, to get the main seam yeah on the side because what it is is basically design of the rucksack is just like a square piece of material and fold it in half yeah fold that in half like and st sit that down the sides yeah so I'm talking about the side seam the bottom is just a fold over yeah to get this sort of material properly lined up I have done a bit uh, let's see put a, a top stitch on it yeah I mean it's this is the outside yeah the visible side it's flat absolutely flat and it got one two three four five five seams yeah to stabilize the tear of the side so you may notice notice this you, know, you can see that this little strip here yeah it's put on the underneath side yeah and stitched up four times so one seam is actually just to put the two materials together and the other is just like sandwich another piece let's say so if you put things together got it like that and then uh, the the bits flapping around yeah like they do on this little bags usually a seam so you just got this butterfly things uh, floating around yeah and uh, only got one seam in the middle and when you pull that out you eventually can even look through yeah I can look through that yeah so uh, and that's not very solid stable uh, solution so on that one on the original rucksack uh, because I did cut or take five centimeter off each side to make the whole rucksack slimmer yeah um, 
I put a top seam on top, yeah, or a, a cup seam, what they call it, and it's just the rough edge just folded off to one side and stitched on top. So it's basically folded one fold and stitched over, yeah. While I spread on the DIY one, I did spread the seam like flat and put another piece strip on top yeah so basically sandwiched over the top and um, to make them neat or nice uh, i didn't cut the strip to size in the first place it was actually wider than the material than the seam stitched it on and then trimmed the rest off both sides near to this is the top side going all along and then ending up just below the uh, double bottom so another thing to keep in mind when you do a rucksack like that you need a double bottom yeah um, let's see the straps getting a bit stiff Right. Let's see. I know it's hard to see in the light I try it. so there's basically there's the material coming up here and it's basically folding around and going up here yeah so it's just the bottom bit and it's about what was it 20 centimeter or something yeah just to stabilize the bottom uh, where the main carrying weight is actually sitting on especially on the side where the straps pulling yeah so uh, there's more double material on the bottom it's just adding up for stability yeah um, while we are on the back is there anything you can see this uh, the eyelets the leather eyelets i put on and they're two further down yeah and just going across and then going up knotting together and this is actually it's something i may show you later on when I coming back to the straps but this leather straps I did bought them individually yeah and from Hubertus which is making the original rucksacks um, they were so kind and selling me the straps the leather parts that means the handle and the straps including the buckles on the bottom and the attachments on its own so um, this rope going down there it's actually the straps having two holes yeah so the strap basically is going across inside and see strap it's actually going from here across yeah and then through the material through the strap onto the inside of the rock sack yeah um, so basically that's something you have to take to, into account to leave a gap yeah I mean you can see a stitching gap there yeah, it's see visible yeah there's a gap so the rope going through another thing about the back yeah with the padding the seat felt um, this is basically fairly easy it's just slotted in here it can be pulled out yeah so I got my seat felt at any time, yeah, and uh, got this. Well, it's just a flap with just a an open pocket, both sides open pocket, yeah, and um, to give the the uh, seat pad a home, sort of, yeah. There's another thing you see this 
little uh, bit on a poke on the, on the side yeah here on the side it's actually it's the bottom there's a rock the, the seat pad is sitting in yeah so it can't move out yeah it's just sitting there and um, so it's just uh, a flap stitch onto the whole lot well uh, now it's about the front pockets yeah the front pockets um, I mean I did I, I clip in some details from one of the other videos now yes um, the Norwegian rucksack you can see how actually front is uh, made up uh, just a sample of the buckles uh, before I stitch it all on to the pack and uh, yes how the um, toggles are created just rolled up leather glued up and uh, let it dry it's actually a, sh a shoemaker gl glue uh, half done buckles and ready one just a free bits punched the holes and uh, Yes, to make them neat and nice and feed the um, cord through and cut the tips off. Uh, then I try to put it all on and uh, make it look like nice. Um, the open flaps, you see the toggles and the detail of the pocket, how the folding is made up. The finished uh, front pockets, it's all done and neat. And another sample when they are open, how it looks like. And uh, the stitching is almost done. Part of the uh, leather that's to come. That's the uh, front design. Well, the, how the f actually it's made up. Um, how it looks like with the cloth, the eyelets getting marked up. And uh, the leather put in place, like... Um, making a layout and how to put it on marking it up so it's all neat and nice and straight and uh, the eyelids from leather and the front it's all stitched up and that's what the contents look like and how it's actually laid out in the pack rucksack is that the two well the two pockets yeah it's one piece one large strip yeah just fold it up like in waves yeah and then stitched on there's no seam anywhere yeah sort of it just stitch on this is the bottom yeah just fold it over and uh, tucked together and then followed the whole lot and uh, stitched in the middle i did put a strip on top but they're not joined like so they can can't go like that it's just uh, it's just a stabilized strip in the middle on top yeah but the material continues just by folding the uh, bits together and uh, so this is just something to keep in mind um, actually that's something I copied from the old uh, donkey bag photographers the old ones the old kids know what a donkey bag is yeah uh, or donkey bag donkey bag yeah it's a cotton camera bag and they got exactly the same sort of principle uh, without flaps on top yeah the front pockets it's one piece folded up stitched up in the middle stitched up on the side and one row on the bottom and um, I added the flaps obviously taking the idea from the rucksack yeah so the main difference is and I go into that in one of the clips cutting into that now show you in the previous video how they um, how I altered the um, front pockets yeah so this are the ones easy standard like you find them everywhere uh, usually just a straight opening and an overlap and that's it so but what's about if you forget to close it down and it's flopping yeah and you're bumping up and down 
and made stuff just pop out. On this one, this can't um, happen because you got this fold even when it's closed down you get this little yeah it folds over and nothing can fall out that easy and um, even if it's here up top yeah um, it's still holding tight uh, just by gravity sort of that was one idea imagine this is something um, that all needs to be sought through before you even start yeah especially take your sheet yeah with a drawing and uh, so you, you can memorize things and uh, uh, work out take your time yeah it's it doesn't matter if you put on leather toggles or wooden toggles just make your concept and uh, work from there yeah um, if you rather like uh, a brass uh, eyelids just and you got them punch them in instead of uh, going through the effort and stitching all the leather eyelids on yeah or if you sign uh, things they are more pretty but be aware brass eyelids they can pull out of the material so um, eventually they never grip into the material like stitched on eyelids yeah this is something um, the leather eyelids will never fail yeah because it, it's they got the material the, the wool material the cloth sandwiched between two strips of well, two eyelids or leather yeah, stitched together beep, 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 and um, they're not coming off yeah and they're easy to repair in case I want to change something but a, a pressed in uh, a brass eyelid first of all it's not as white than the leather's uh, uh, eyelid you can make it as white as you want but uh, they fail I know that from the uh, old Land Rover hoods yeah and uh, they do fail and um, so this is the reason why I got the leather eyelids yeah got this uh, leather things leather eyelids in there they're a bit larger than on the original yeah because this is Mach 2 uh, so I could put the eyelids exactly where I wanted it because there was no limitation and uh, I don't know if you can see, see this is the, the front and from here it actually slopes then down towards the back and but um, first of all I made this one larger than on the original one yeah it's the same design but scaled up yeah to suit the, uh, the rucksack um, because I haven't used and it's doubled material and it's stitched up like a heart shape sort of yeah wider on the top and then going darting down a bit not pointed but uh, sort of yeah and uh, narrow at the back side yeah where the straps attach a bit wider than the straps yeah so you can see it's just about like the leather back plate yeah and um, it's double material then turned inside out and give it a top uh, seam yeah to stabilize it and it obviously got an opening with a pocket and yeah that was something uh, more complicated uh, I had to really get some uh, brain grease out there uh, in the end I managed to get that to do that without zip and just a leather strip yeah and a, and a bottom a bottom and um, it's flat and it doesn't fail yeah 
there's no zip that can break or making any noise yeah it's just the pocket very flat um what else we got yes um In the screenshot with the mobile took some pictures of the parts of the rucksack before I, or during the making process. So there is a difference in the shape. Yeah. One side is when it's stitched together, the back side is straight and the front side is sort of going up a bit. Yeah. And Let's see. So I'm holding I'm holding that on the seams here on the side and you can see maybe you can see that for the light there's it's taller up here than it is up here yeah it's basically like that and that allows me to have the rucksack darted yeah like the front, the front here is taller than on the back where the handle is located, right? So that means when I pull this together, it actually rubs backwards towards the, um, the back, yeah? But doesn't change the angle from the back forward, yeah? the whole lot actually pulls towards the body um, to make them more comfortable and uh, that way it's nicely covered yeah so i don't know if you can see that I, um, in the stills you will see some details on how i made that um, as you can see um, that actually makes use of the different different heights on the back side yeah and the front side of the rucksack where the side pockets are on yeah so it's actually pulling up like that yeah so there's more material on that side that can actually pull up so this is basically uh, well they called it a snow protection you still got snow protection with the main lid yes but um, that's something the Bergen, the guy, yeah, who invented the, the Telemark rucksack, he actually came up with the idea. And I put you an image in the screenshots um, from the Telemark rucksack, the green one, yeah, and uh, where you can see that. And I measured that up and adapted that for my rucksack, yeah. So there are lots of different um, uh, things that came into mind um during the process of making this yeah and uh, as i say this is an absolute customized it's a one-off rucksack yeah um if you get an idea you may capable of um uh, copy or make yeah copy some of these ideas and um, make use of it um, for your own project yeah i'm more than happy to give you some guidance or help yeah and um, if you ask me, <laughs> I can uh, point you out. And um, yeah, uh, another thing which I mentioned in one of the other clips, I stitched on some additional loopy bits. Yeah, so I can uh, compress the rucksack on the side. Yeah, uh, it's for the balance and uh, to keep things compact because nothing is worse than having a sloppy rucksack yeah because it's uh, a sloppy rucksack first of all it's not comfortable then it's clonking around stuff is shifting around and um, but um, when you got the rucksack compressed as small or tight as possible yeah it's just sitting on your back i mean you can see that on another clip with the balancing and uh, well, I just shift around and it's just sitting on my back, yeah, without even having a, a belt, a hip belt attachment, yeah. So it's just sitting on 
the lumbar spine and the chest yeah and without cutting into the shoulder so um, that makes the whole rucksack very very simple very lightweight yeah and it's uh, I mean take a nylon rucksack or uh, an equal size modern rucksack yeah with a back plate or any stiffening uh, rods or whatever in the in the back yeah they you won't find any rucksack with a capacity between 45 and 50 liter which this is yeah um, that weights less than this one yeah even well yeah okay if you're having a, a, a tieback Tyvek material, yeah, it's just thin artificial material. I got some Tyvek here. Yeah, it's like paper. Yeah, it's tough, but it got the wrong color for the start. I mean, it's probably all right in winter, but um, yeah, I use it for ground sheets, yeah, in the past, and because it's very lightweight. But um, well, with the exception of uh, Tyvek, um, the woolen rucksack is still lighter than anything uh, I could find yeah and I put that on the scale yeah and this including the seat felt yeah the whole lot is it's about one half kilo one half kilo for the carrying system only including the leather straps yeah um, and I'm pretty sure you won't find any modern rucksack that weights less than one half kilo with a capacity of 50 liter yeah and uh, that's a, already a sort of medium to large size rucksack yeah um, so the base rucksack isn't really that heavy yeah and um, while making use of other material or other, other items like a seat pad which I otherwise have to carry anyway with a modern rucksack yeah, as an individual item. This is part stabilization of the rucksack yeah, and padding. So I basically take the padding out and having a seat. Yeah. <laughs> so, and um, first of all, I don't have to carry an extra item yeah, uh, like you would do in a modern rucksack and um, so this is all coming up and as I explained in the packing and the uh, balancing video uh, about packing the tarp and uh, blanket like sandwich as a uh, back plate replacement yeah uh, so it's, again it's material or equipment I'm using to stabilize the uh, rucksack without the need of carrying this stabilizing a frame or frame uh, material in the rucksack on its own yeah um, so that's the reason why I'm not concerned about that uh, the square meter of this heavy duty stuff uh, weights about 580 gram yeah per square meter i mean there's about material wise i use probably including um the material for the uh, the front pocket and the slot on the back yeah on the top pocket uh, i think i used uh, two and a half meter i ordered two and a half meter of the roll and the material is one meter fifty wide yeah so um, i mean uh, it would be like uh the material on its own yeah and with all the cutoffs i mean it's it's one half kilo yeah i use on the material so um it's not too bad and um i know what i got i know how it works i know how it behaves and um yeah i mean here it was an open microphone yeah it's just It's nothing, yeah. Even the seat felt, and it's rubbing against the. It's wool, yeah, hundred percent wool, no static. 
static uh, 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 from the nylon yeah very good to uh, spark or, or electric shock <laughs> it's just wool um, it can cope with some water like it's uh, got the lanolin the uh, uh, sheep butter uh, still in the material yeah in a reduced manner it's not soaked like <laughs> yeah but um, it can it prevents for it's it's sort of uh, 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 water repellent yeah um, eventually it gets soaked when it's actually getting over 35 percent of water yeah then you can feel it's getting wet but before it actually takes up the amount of water up to 35 percent you won't don't, you don't feel the wet yeah it brings me to another issue about when you got your rucksack wet it obviously needs a longer time to dry off than obviously nylon or cotton yeah but uh, it's not raining not raining all the time and um, yeah when you do camp uh, when you get soaked in the woods uh, it doesn't matter if you get soaked in in nylon and, and cotton stuff or if you get soaked in wool stuff it just takes a little bit longer to dry off and uh, but once you are soaked you're most likely taking a, a day break anyway anywhere sheltered yeah hanging all your stuff up to get it all dried out again i did that before yeah i had this experience um just use that one or two days uh to recover from ever doing shopping staying in a hostel or whatever yeah and uh because after heavy rain and getting soaked up to the skin you're pissed off anyway so you're most likely having a treat in a shelter a hostel or any campsite where you can actually dry your stuff up clean up and refill and you know like top up your food and stuff and um, having a bit a rest a bit an entertainment uh, yeah this is how it works yeah so it's not like uh, it's all part of the experience and uh, yeah it, it does rain eventually yeah not so much in the desert but uh, in the northern hemisphere it's a common um, condition yeah it's getting wet anyway um this is a bit of brainstorming um uh, master class <laughs> a few tips tips and tricks um how to do things and um how this rocks that came together and why yeah and uh, it's a bit more a compact video this time i hope it will help in case you fancy doing your own project similar to that one you don't have to copy that once to one uh, adapt that for your needs think about what you want you may pick up some of the tricks and um, yeah and as i say this is a 45 to 50 liter rucksack yeah and um, this is a good size capable of uh, carrying a lot of equipment uh, not too bulky but can take up some bulk yeah and uh, but every rucksack every size limit got its limits for purpose yeah if you got really bulky stuff fluffy fluffy uh, uh, sleeping bag yeah you probably want a 75 liter rucksack yeah but then you got either a lots of uh, empty space to carry a lot more weight for the pack itself yeah and when you got uh, uh, a smaller rucksack like a 35 liter rucksack or 30 liter rucksack is probably full, full up with the sleeping bag alone yeah <laughs> so uh, no space for the other gear yeah it's maybe it does a job for a weekend trip but not if you want to go 
out for two or three weeks or maybe even longer yeah so i found out by yes using different sizes of rucksacks yeah 30 liter 35 I, for a long time i had a 35 liter rucksack yeah and even a 30 uh, 75 liter rucksack uh, for a three months trip on a motorcycle but that, that even that wasn't full up yeah um it was just uh what was it oh i can't remember it was a nylon rucksack and uh, laying on a motorcycle and uh, and that was rainproof there's one more thing which i actually um uh came up with yeah um originally and i'm still sticking to the fact that i'm using the um uh the hammock as a fold up sleeping pad yeah in a hard surface shelter but for winter or uh, maybe even for a really long trip i probably take a felt yeah like it's a 13 millimeter uh, millimeter uh, half an inch felt yeah same as that one this is seed felt yeah uh, what is it 40 by 30 centimeter square yeah and uh, i ordered a larger piece as well which is basically uh, a dock resting pad yeah so it's this one in particular is for medium size docks yeah i'm not a really large dog i'm a medium-sized dog sort of yeah <laughs> um so it's not too heavy not too big you maybe make up i did tapper the edge i take took a dart off the side so it's basically narrow here then in the middle and one side is wider then the bottom yeah uh, that's just very stiff the reason why i choose that one i can put that in a hammock or on a hard surface ground for winter camping but you say yeah it's short how can you sleep on a short uh, pad like that well this is only half the pad what I did, you see, you got this tie up strips here, and I got my seat pad. Yeah, and if you look closer, I punched some holes there into it on every corner. Yeah, so I can then feed this one through. Yeah, which allows me to extend which allows me to this actually allows me to extend the pad yeah by another foot well 30 centimeter yeah a bit more than a foot and uh, so this is good enough for shoulder body height and bum yeah and a bit of the upper legs and uh, i mean i i don't need my feet on a on the padding yeah but uh, obviously the upper legs for the knees and the hip section and shoulder bit and body wants to be and it's an insulation and padding option yeah so as you can see it's the seat pad is an integrated part of the sleeping system as well by extending the bottom yeah and having a really large or larger uh, sleeping pad and it doesn't take up that much uh, that much space than on an, 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 a full full scale sleeping pad yeah and it's well, yeah okay it still weights a tad more than uh, a plastic uh, pad but first of all it's wool it doesn't scratch and rustle, rustle around at night yeah and 
can uh, take some water without feeling wet. It's still got insulation, yeah, and um, windproof. <laughs> so, uh, and the average sleeping mat is basically the same size, yeah. So it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but this is something if you are wondering why I'm carrying a felt. I'm not carrying that every time, yeah, occasionally, when I know I may have to uh, sleep on a bit of more on a hard surface on cold weather conditions. So this gives me an additional option for even in, in the hammock, yeah, it's a woolly hammock, which got a higher insulation property than uh, the nylon. So it's all adding up. The carrying system, sleeping system, shelter system, packing, it's all targeted as compact as possible and multi-usable as possible. Yeah, I hope you still get the uh, idea of it. And uh, at least that's my approach. And uh, everything is easy to repair in the field, yeah, and uh, hard wearing in the first place, anyway. And uh, the proven material, it's not out official. So, yeah, I hope um, this explains a little bit of the whole uh, uh, rucksack situation, yeah, and um, why I made a series of all this woolly stuff. Uh, I hope you can find some information out of the clips, yeah, which are put cut in between, and uh, I might have to do a bit of voiceover again, but um, uh, yeah, that's um, just as an add-on to the packing and balancing uh, video and the making of the rucksack. What's that about? And uh, in case you want to make your own similar yeah to this one or find it uh, interesting making use of this sort of idea yeah this a woolly classic rucksack instead of a modern camouflage one <laughs> or bright orange or blue uh, plastic one yeah stay tuned i'm pretty sure at one or the other stage are coming along with more videos so see you